Shalom, 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 Israel, brother Amos with the Watchman for Israel. First and foremost, like we always do, we're going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, to the brothers pushing this truth for strong sincerity, laboring on the highways and byways, making their body a living sacrifice, doing all they can for the hopeful elect, for the nation of Israel, and for all those who desire and learn. I want to give you all a strong shalom. To the brothers out there pushing this truth for strong sincerity, laboring on the highways and byways, making a body and living sacrifice, doing all they can for the hopeful elect. I'm going to give you all a strong shalom. Uh, to the sisters holding down in the household, reverence to their husbands, being a teacher of good things to the younger women. I'm going to give you all a strong shalom as well. <clears throat> and to the men and women forsaking this world and coming out of this world, I want to compel you all to be here as the Church of Berea. To search the scriptures daily and diligently to see if the words that be spoken to you are true or not. Right? Let the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah be true and every man a liar. Right? If it's not thus say of the Lord, cast it behind you and seek to what Yahweh Bashim Yahshah says. Or the prophets of the Lord, men will understand it. Right? So this is a quick snack. Right? We're going to do it all things in moderation and seasonably. Right? Not going to get too in depth. It's just a quick reminder unto Israel that everything doesn't have to be done to excess. Right? Everything doesn't have to be done abundantly at one time. Right? This is Proverbs 20 and verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Right? So, wine is a mocker. Why is wine a mocker? Because you can drink an adequate amount of wine and feel good. You can drink an adequate amount of, of strong drink and feel, and feel good. But once you take that final sip, that sip that takes you over the top, when you're not no longer enjoying yourself, but you're arguing, crying, trying to fight, talking about old memories, that's when wine has become a mocker, right? So how does it mock you? It turns you into a lunatic and a clown if you drink too much wine, right? A strong drink is raging. Why is that? People get strong drink and they want to fight. That's why it's called wine and spirits. You drink too much of those spirits, Lord knows what could happen to you, man. There's countless stories about uh, DUI, DWI, people getting in accidents, killing people. People being drunk, get in the bar fights or fights outside and punching somebody and they die, right? Too much of something is never good, right? And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Why does that mean you're not wise? Because you weren't being circumspect. You weren't paying attention, right? Wisdom is going to teach you when enough is enough, right? Wisdom is going to teach you when it's okay to say, no, nah, I'm good. I don't need that. That's something not for me. Right? Let's go to uh, Cyrax. Chapter 31. Like I said, it's not going to be a super long one. <coughs> so lucky. Right? We'll start at uh, verse 20. Cyrax 31 and 20. Sound sleep cometh of moderate eating. He rises early, his wits are with him, but the pain of watching and colia and pain of the belly are with an unsatiable man, right? So if you eat moderately, you're not eating eight plates of food and doing these things, you're going to get a, a, a decent amount of sleep, right? But if you uh, uh, eat too much and you want to have grandma's famous Sunday night surprise with the gravy dripping on it, on top of the macaroni and cheese and the greens got turkey bacon in it because they know you don't eat pork and you have eight plates of that, you're going to have cola and pangs of the belly, right? <clears throat> if thou has been forced to eat, arise, go vomit, and thou shalt have rest, right? If, if somebody forced you to eat, for, for example, your grandmother or one of your aunties, like, nah, baby, you looking skinny, eat this, right? Get yourself some comfort so you're not sitting there having pains when you eat, right? You ate too much pizza, now you have uh, acid reflux, you feel like you're throwing up at night, right? <clears throat> right? 
My son, hear me and despise me not, and at the lands thou shalt find, as I told thee, and all thy works be quick, so shall there no sickness come unto thee. Whosoever is liberal of his meat, men shall speak well of him, and the report of his good housekeeping will be housekeeping will be believed. Right? What does it mean to be liberal of your meats? Right? You don't eat too much and spare. You want to make sure that people uh, have some as well. There's four pieces of lamb and there's three people sitting there. You don't need four pieces. Right? You get Not everybody else gets some. Right? And they're going to speak about that well pleasure that you have done. But against him that is a nigger of his meat, the whole city shall murmur. And the testimony of his niggardness shall be shall not be doubted. Right? What's a nigger? Somebody who's greedy. Somebody who's not going to share with somebody. It's going to go around. We've all had that person we've been around. They got a whole large fry. You're like, yo, I didn't get nothing. You mind if I get some fries? They give you two fries. Right? That's a nigger. <clears throat> and niggardness is stingy. Right? Now we're getting to wine. Right? So remember, this whole video is about temperance and things. Now we're speaking about wine. <clears throat> and we're speaking about... Uh, uh, meats and eating right and it's a reminder you know sometimes you know you had food so good or you might have drank some wine and you feel like you're still hungry but we got to be mindful right i know i fall victim to that plenty of times i want to have another plate when i shouldn't right but it comes with temperance it comes with reminding yourself of getting cut by watching these videos right Show not thy valiantness in wine, for wine has destroyed many. Right? Don't show your boldness and your strength, right? That you're the, the you're the most excellent Israelite in wine, for wine has destroyed many. Right? It brings a bad name unto you. It'll make you a joke, it'll make you a laughing stock, it'll make you somebody who just looks at you'll be that person who looked at like here come this drunk nigga. Right, listen to what he about to say. It destroyed many. The furnace proves the end by dipping, so do it wind the hearts of the proud by drunkenness. Right? And that's why they say wine is a marker. It's going to prove the person you truly are. Right? You can fake the fuck for so long, but you get a little bit of wine, you start to truly see the type of person that you're around. You start to truly see the type of person you are. Are you spewing out vileness out of your mouth? Just talking crazy? How you take people wise? How you this? How you that? Are you upright? Are you upright because the wine doesn't show any perverseness in you? Right? All in all, it's all of the Lord. Right? The Lord put that down and the spirit and the wine got up in you and now you start tripping and doing all this extra stuff that you don't usually do. Now you got to explain to the congregation why you was acting a fool. Right? Wine is as good as life to a man. Right? So the Lord compared wine to uh, life. Right? If it be drunk moderately, what life is then to a man that ha that is without wine? For it was made to make men glad. <clears throat> right? So if you're drinking wine and you're drinking it moderately, right? And you feel good, you can laugh, you can joke. But you're not drunk. You're not ex excessively uh, spewing out things you shouldn't be doing. Right? The heart is glad. Because that's what wine was made for. Wine was made for uh, feast days. Brothers get together, drink wine, have a good time. Right? You having a date night with, with your spouse. Right? These things are good as life if drunk and moderately. Wine measurably drunk and in season bringing gladness of heart and cheerfulness of the mind. Right? So you start to... Uh, man, this time we done, we done had a, a bottle of wine as the brothers. Man, conversation go on for five, six hours, seven hours for completion. And we don't even realize it because we're enjoying each other's time, right? You know, I may enjoy a night with my wife. We drink wine. We may watch a movie, right? It's a nice evening. But wine drunken with excess, so like it, but wine drunken with excess make it bitterness of the mind with brawling and quarreling, right? That's how you get those drunk fights. Right, you arguing, nobody can reason, nobody can see that Satan is in the midst of the congregation or in the midst of your household because you're all drunk. Right, you've all been drunk in this, now you're brawling and quarreling, you arguing about, you remember that time eight years ago when you said this? 
or six years ago when you did that, now you both look like drunken fools, right? You got to learn from these mistakes, and it's okay. You know, sometimes you have to go down that path to understand that it's not for you. Understand that drinking this amount of wine is going to make you have a night like that. Or drinking uh, this amount of wine is going to make you say things like that. And that's what you want to avoid. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offend. And it diminishes strength and make it wounds. Right? So a fool gets drunk and he wants to arm wrestle, fight. Go to the body, play, uh, uh, slap box. And it causes, and it offends and it make it wounds. <coughs> what does that mean? You might wake up. Headache, hungover, talking about I need two cheeseburgers to get right. You got cuts on your neck, on your knees, on your knuckles. You're like, what happened? And then you're looking at a video on somebody's phone talking about you uh, got into a, a, a all-out melee with somebody you don't even know. So drunkenness to fools causes damage. But wine drunk immeasurably in its season make it joy of the heart. Right? Rebuke not thy neighbor at the wine and despise him not in his mirth. Give him no despite despiteful words and press not upon him with urging him to drink. So when you're out drinking, mind you, said wine is as good as life to a man. Don't be trying to rebuke somebody while, while y'all drinking wine. The wine is made to bring forth mirth. Right? And don't use despiteful words, words that make you want to hurt somebody. Calling them B A Ns or S A Ns, right? Y'all, y'all figure out those acronyms, right? And now y'all going at it, right? And press not upon him with urging him to drink, right? No, one more shot, one more shot. Now you eight shots in, talking about another shot. He done already said he didn't want to drink. Now he's stumbling around, throwing up in the trash can. You can't urge somebody to drink. So mind you. These are etiquettes that you got to keep at feast days in your house. Be mindful of how you measure out things. You have to prove your own soul to see what's really good for it. With that, drink measurably and in season and not excessively. Shalom.